Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, the Computer Certification Bulldog here, and today I've got a combination video practice exam for you. This is for you CCNA and CCNP switch candidates, and of course it's on switching. I'm going to show you the answers to these questions on live Cisco switches. We're going to go through the questions pretty quickly, so if you need to pause the video, take a few extra seconds to think about your answer, you know, certainly no problem there. But again, I want plenty of time at the end of the exam to show you these answers uh, on our live equipment as well. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Some of the questions today are multiple choice, but this isn't one of them, obviously. You've got two switches that are connected via three crossover cables. So therefore, we know we've got six ports involved overall. How many of those are going to be in forwarding mode for the default VLAN? How many of those ports are going to end up in forwarding mode for the default VLAN when we're done? And by the way, what is that default VLAN number? Got to know that one. This is one I'm going to look like right here if you don't uh, if you don't know that one. I'm sure you do. Some people say I look like that anyway. But uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next question and not talk about that anymore. There's a term that really threw me the first time I heard it when I started studying for my NA. Uh, unknown unicast frame. And my first thought was, well, if it's unicast, how can it be unknown? You know, what's unknown about it? Well, that's what I'm asking you today. How can a frame be unknown if it's a unicast? You know, what's unknown about it? And then I want you to tell me how a switch handles such a frame. We know we've only got so many choices there. You know, it could be just filtered, could be forwarded to one address or out one port, and it could be flooded. So which one of those actions would it take? Now here we have, we've got a multiple choice one for you. Which of these four values is a Cisco switch going to consider first when a frame comes in on a port? Is it going to look at the source IP, the destination IP, the source MAC, or the destination MAC? And then finally, for you CCNAers, you're not going to be tested on multi-layer switching, but there are some basics you need to know. And this is one of them. Of routing and switching, which of these are enabled by default on a multi-layer switch? Is it both routing and switching, neither routing and switching, only routing, or only switching? Important, uh, important little definition there are different. So let's go ahead and tackle these questions and I'll show you the answers here on live Cisco equipment including especially this one because we've got six ports involved. How many are going to be in forwarding mode for that default VLAN? Let's go ahead and bring our pod up and we're on switch two right now. I'll run show spanning VLAN one. Now there are four different ways Bulldogs that you should be able to tell from this output whether you're on the root switch or not. We're not going to go over all four here, but if you're not sure what they are, do a YouTube search for root switch, and I, there are some videos out there I've created that will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here, one of the ways, though, you can tell is that all the ports on this switch are in forwarding mode. And if that's the case for a certain VLAN, you know you're on the root. So, so far, we're three for three. Now we need to find out how many ports on the non-root in this configuration are in forwarding mode. Let's go over to switch one, there we go. Show spanning VLAN one, and you'll see that only one of them is. This is the normal behavior. So out of the six ports involved, four of them were in forwarding mode, two of them were in blocking mode. That's exactly what we expect to see. Now that default VLAN we just saw was uh, VLAN one, and let me show you a little bonus information while we're here. Here's VLAN 1 under the Show VLAN Brief output. You can see the name is default, that is the native VLAN. Also notice that we see our ports over here, but we do not see ports 9, 10, and 11. That's because they're trunking. If a port is trunking, you are not going to see it under Show VLAN Brief because a port that's trunking is considered to be a member of all VLANs. And that really panicked me the first time I saw it, frankly. Let me bring that over just a bit here. Because I thought, well, you know, why aren't these other ports showing up? I haven't even done anything yet. Well, again, the reason you're not seeing them under Show VLAN Brief is because you're seeing them under Show Interface Trunk 
or you're also seeing them here under show spanning VLAN 1. If they're trunking, you're not going to see them under show VLAN brief. Now that unknown unicast frame I was talking about, the reason it's unknown is that the switch does not have an entry for the destination MAC address in its MAC address table yet. So while it is a unicast frame, it's destined for only one destination, the switch does not know which of its ports leads to that destination. That's where the unknown part comes out. So how does the switch handle that frame? The same way it would handle a broadcast, it's going to flood it. It's going to send it at every port on the switch except the one it came in on. And let's talk, oh, now before we get to the multi-layer switch, very important concept here because you would think, as I did when I started studying, well, you know, the switch is going to look at the destination MAC address first because that's how it knows where to send the frame. Well, the second half of that is correct, but the first half of it is wrong. The switch is actually going to look at the source MAC address first because not only is that the value that the switch uses to build its MAC address table in the first place, you may also have some security features in place such as port security that actually use that source MAC address as a kind of password. So if the port security config doesn't match up, if we're not getting the frame from a particular source MAC address that we're expecting, we don't, we don't care what the destination is because there's a good chance we're not going to do anything with that frame. So again, the first value that the switch is going to look at is actually going to be the source MAC address. On this multi-layer switching, we've all tripped over this more than once and I don't want you to trip over it on exam day. Of routing and switching, which are enabled by default? D. Switching but not routing because all of your ports not, are going to be switch ports and if you want them to be routed ports you've got to configure them as such with the no switch port command. You may need to add some other commands as well globally but you've got to make the individual switch port a routed port with the no switch port command. That is it for today's video practice exam. I invite you to join me out on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got a lot of great new videos coming up and my blog and Facebook fan page as well. Thanks for taking today's video practice exam. I'm Chris Bryant, the Computer Certification Bulldog.